Hello, it's Greg Allison from Green Greg's Garden and Warm Farm coming to you today with a bushcraft tip. How do you tell the difference between poison oak uh, and things that are not poison oak? Poison ivy. How do you know it? How do you tell it? Well, ivy climbs, but not everything that climbs is ivy. So what is this? I ask people what this is all the time and they say, oh, that's poison ivy. Look at this. Oh, I grabbed it in my hands. Oh no, oh no. It's not poison ivy. This, my friend, uh, has got fingers like a hand. Therefore, you can handle it. Five leaves. That's why I said fingers like a hand. It's five leaves. This is Virginia creeper. Virginia creeper is a keeper. <laughs> it's not going to cause you rashes unless you've got some really weird allergy. Now, the key thing about poison ivy and poison oak is leaflets three, leave it be. Or you might be feeling all itchy. So let's look at that. Let's look for that. There is, and often grows together, a little bit of poison ivy in there. So those three leaves, mmm. Sometimes poison ivy and Virginia creeper grow together. They both like woods. And that is not poison oak. That is an oak. <laughs> and it's not leaflets three. Now that's leaflets three, but maybe since it might be hard for you to distinguish, maybe you shouldn't bother this, but that's actually a blackberry vine, a small one. You can feel the thorns in here. You know me, I grab these things and pull them up usually, but it's not gonna do all that great and wonderful out here in the middle of the woods. That, my friends, see those three leaves? Look at the pattern. That is poison oak. There, there. Blackberry, poison oak, blackberry, poison oak, Virginia creeper, Virginia creeper, it's a keeper, some poison ivy, and here we have some poison oak and Virginia creeper growing side by side, maybe that's why people get them confused, they do that a lot. And there is a grape vine. You can eat grape leaves. So there is plenty to see, plenty to eat, but don't eat poison ivy. Don't eat poison oak. Uh, if you do, you're going to be hurting. <laughs> it could be bad. Although lumberjacks, and as reputed in the northwest, would eat the very beginning of the season when the leaves first popped out, little bitty ones until they got bigger and bigger to build up an immunity against it. Now, don't, not recommending that. Not at all. Don't take that as a recommendation from Greg Allison because you might get in trouble. Although, I did get an immunity once I, I used to be immune to poison oak. I burned some in the campfire, big mistake. And then uh, it started getting me. And here again, poison oak, Virginia creeper, and grapes. Actually, that is uh, musky dimes. That's probably a grape right there. You can see through here, poison oak. And uh, Virginia creeper, Virginia creeper all over the place. And uh, I've got stuff climbing up this pine tree here. And I see Virginia creeper. But there's some three leaf. That is not Virginia creeper. So, green bar. You can eat that. Let's talk about that. So it's good in bushcraft skills to know and understand what to stay away from and what you can eat. That you cannot wait. Do not go out in the woods and pick leaves to wipe your mmm -hmm with after you've done your business and let it be that. <laughs> I had a friend did that and he regretted it very, 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 very much. That would be a, that would leave you some soreness that you would have a rough time with for a long time. Yeah, don't go there. Know your plants. Start learning your plants. Bushcraft is very important, very vital if you're going to stay alive and thrive out in the wilderness. You know, and the best way to learn it is to find local experts or, and get out and live and spend some time in the woods. Get out and get used to things. Don't just stay cooped up in the city all the time. Do some camping. Do some exploring. I had the great advantage of having grown up on a farm and I learned this stuff when I was a kid 
I also read a lot of books on wild edibles, even when I was a kid, because I was thinking about living out in the wilderness. I was getting, when I was a, you know, teenager, like 14 year old, I was buying books written by Yul Gibbons. Yul Gibbons. He wrote a lot of stuff. He was famous for saying, some parts of a pine tree are edible. And guess what? I cover that in my videos. And what is this, my friends? Creeping up the tree. Leaflets three, leave it be. That is poison ivy. Yeah, don't mess with that. Some people are allergic just to even get close to it. So that is definitely a stay away. And that again right here is an oak. That's an oak. That is not poison oak, it's just oak. Actually, I believe that is white oak. Greenbrier, yum yum. Greenbrier, similar, so I'll the name for it. A huckleberry bush. Huckleberries are good. I got huckleberries here. Huckleberries, blueberries, and compost to put in the garden, to put in worm beds. That's leaf litter. The best stuff to use for your worm beds. More oak, more green briar. Hmm. Grape leaves, pine trees, and oh, sweet gum. I'm gonna have to cover sweet gum in a future video. What the advantages of that? And my friends, here is huckleberry bush. And they make nice little berries. They're not quite as tasteful or as uh, fruity, juicy usually as a uh, as uh, blueberries, but they're nice. Now the core of a pine has got uh, rich pine in it. It's easy to make fire. It's very oil rich. And this, my friends, is a little white oak. That is a white oak. You can tell from the leaves, you can tell from the bark. And that's what people used to split that wood to make baskets with. So, there you go. Now, more uh, huckleberry bush. If you know bushcraft, what you're going to know is there's plenty to survive on out in the forest, in the wilderness. What you're probably going to be most lacking in is sources for... Uh, carbohydrates you know there's only so many places you're gonna find cattails if you're not around the swamp yeah the cattail roots are rich in carbohydrates actually some of your docks are but you can probably need to boil that and cook it and throw the water out and process it a few times because I hear those things are really rough the uh, cat, uh, the roots for the uh, sour dock curly dock those kind of plants but uh, yeah, finding a good source of carbohydrates, which you'll need to burn all the energy, will be challenging. That's why you need to grow your own garden. That's why you may not make it just solely on uh, wild edibles. But wild edibles definitely help help a whole lot if you're in a dire strait. It can keep you going for a while. This is a large white oak here. Feast yourselves upon the white oak. Very useful tree. Very, very, very useful tree so there we are that's the bushcraft tips for the day uh, you'll probably see me eating some of these huckleberries later wild blueberries and such I got great vines everywhere there's a lot to eat right here in my forest uh, the other thing you're going to be uh, missing out on is proteins Greg I can hunt Greg I can trap well you got to realize that uh, it hits the fan after just a few weeks all the big game's gone. If all you got is a beer, big deer rifle and you shoot at something, all you're gonna find is some splatter left over because about the only thing left to shoot at is gonna be a mouse or a squirrel. You're very lucky you might find a rabbit, but all that stuff's gonna start vanishing fast. And uh, you may be eating bugs and worms more than anything. Protein is gonna be the hardest thing to come by. By the way, moths are edible. You can eat a moth. That's the good news. And they do get attracted to light. But, you know, yeah, you can eat them off raw. That's what the Special Forces would train on. I've actually done it. I've eaten live moth just to test it out. Uh, it might be a way to get something you don't want, though. You're probably taking a risk. Uh, this is a nice little huckleberry bush. So, and this is a wild cherry tree. Wild cherry. See these leaves? See that bark? 
that bark. And this is my beautiful flowering wild azaleas. They look like honeysuckle blooms. So, and this is my overgrown orchard, which I got to process and get out. And I did save some huckleberry bushes in my orchard. I've also planted blueberry. I've got fig. Still got some blackberries to pull up in here. Because I've got plenty of wild blackberries in lots of places. They take this place over. You often ask, Greg, why do you pull up blackberries? Because they're overrunning my place and making a jungle here. But in any event, plenty of wild edibles. Plenty of things to survive on. Survive and thrive. So just uh, be sure to uh, click uh, subscribe on my channel. There's more videos to come on building greenhouses, aquaponics, on uh, raised bed gardening, on, uh, you know, solar energy. I still got to do a video on this stuff here. And uh, do some videos on my uh, garden beds. There's turmeric coming up. More videos to come. Yeah, I'm fighting the forest here. Uh, more videos to come on uh, power grid defense, more videos to come on uh, all kind of uh, want to grow things. So again, be sure to click subscribe, like my channel or my video, click the update notification bell, and down below you'll find links to my Patriot Supply for uh, prepping supplies for long-term food storage, uh, storable food that lasts for 25 years, and uh, Better get it while the getting's good because I'm expecting prices for food are going to shoot way up in the very near future with all the flooding out west. And also, you'll find uh, links to uh, True Leaf Market below. True Leaf Market is a great source for seeds to plant your garden. And to, uh, let me show you what I planted from True Leaf, by the way. Yeah, you want to plant seed, you want to uh, grow microgreens. If you've seen my microgreens and my microgreen videos, I get all that stuff from True Leaf Market. You can get all that from True Leaf Market. Look inside my greenhouse here on this shelf for all the plants that I'm starting. And all this comes from True Leaf Market. Look at all that stuff I'm starting. Look over there. All the seed came from True Leaf Market. True Leaf Market. So. And if it hits the fan, you can't buy supplies from the store. You got to be able to develop your own fertilizer. Check my links below to my worm farm, uh, greengregs.com. I sell worms. I ship year-round all over the United States. And once again, here is more poison ivy. Poison ivy. Poison ivy. I got to cut those ones. Poison ivy. That's growing next to. Virginia creeper, which is a keeper right up a white oak. Yeah, how many white oaks here? White oaks and pine trees. Big old pine trees. That's a big old crooked gnarly pine tree. Hope it stays up for a long time. Anyway, red maples. Don't eat their seeds. Green briar. You can eat that. Anyway, thank you for watching.